Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass statistics. In this video we're going to go over the difference between a bar graph and histogram. First creating a bar graph given a set of data and then we're going to create a histogram with the same exact set of data. So then there will be examples at the end of this video that you can try on your own. So let's dive right into it. Let's first just do a little review of um, bar graphs versus histograms and the basics that we're going to be looking at today. So, so over here on the left we have bar graphs. So this is usually good for smaller groups of data. Uh, it measures the number of times something occurs. So a big feature of bar graphs is notice that they have spaces between them. And when we look at histograms on the right here, they do not have spaces between them. So histograms, this is better for larger groups of data and everything is measured in intervals. So we're gonna look at an example soon, but let's say these are test scores and this interval will have, will include a tally of everyone who scored between a 60 to a 70. And this would be everyone who scored a 71 to an 80 and so on. So now we know a little background about how the bar graphs and histograms are different. So let's go into our example. It says the scores of a math test are as follows. Create a bar graph and histogram to visually represent the data. So first let's make a bar graph. So we, this is our data. These are all represent different test scores. And to do a bar graph, we're just gonna set up an X and Y axis like this. And we're just gonna we're just gonna put our numbers in order. So we have we start with 65, and we have what's our next number? So we have 65 here and here. Then we have 70. So if I had more room here, I would I would spread this out. 65, 66, 70, 69, 70. But there's not a lot of room to work with numbers like that, which is another downfall of the bar graph. So just something to keep in mind. We have 72 over here. Up next we have 80. And notice I'm putting space between each one. That's what we need for a bar graph. Remember these all represent test scores, so let's just label our axes so we know what we're doing here. We have test scores, and then we have the frequency along this axis here. So the frequency is just the number, in this case, the number of students. The number of students who receive these test scores. So we have one and two, three. Notice we only have one repeating number, right? So now to fill in our bar graph. So we have two values of 65. So we can go to 65, go up to two. Just kind of shade that in so we can see it well. And then the rest, there's no other repeating numbers if you go through this. So if we take those out of the, the problem, notice no other numbers repeat. So we know that the rest all go up to one. Just trying to make this in line here. As you can see, the scores are, you know, we can't really tell how just how they are distributed. You know, they're kind of all over the place and they're just, it's a little difficult to look at. It's a little difficult to come to any conclusions by looking at this bar graph. And that's where a histogram might be more helpful. So let's look at a histogram. In order to make a histogram, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a frequency table. So what this does is, this is where we're going to set up our intervals and then we're going to take each data point, each test score, and then place it into the interval and create a tally. And this will give you the guide for graphing our histogram. So if you notice, you always want to look at, to create a, the intervals, you always want to look at the minimum and the maximum of the data. So our lowest number is 65 and our highest number is 99. So we're going to want to work with our intervals from 60 to 100 about. So I'm going to start it at 60 to 69 and then just go up from there. So we have 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99. So if this had a value of 100, we couldn't use these intervals, right? Because this last uh, interval includes 99 and not 100. But we don't have to worry about that because we don't have that here. So now let's just go one by one but to each data point and categorize them, placing them into our table. So we have this first 65 here. 
So let's just cross it off as we go. So that's going to go into this category right here. So we'll put a tally. And we have another 65. We'll just put it there because it goes with this interval. It's included in 60 to 69. Next we have 70. We'll just put it right here. 72 also goes here. 80 down here. 95 goes in that 90 interval. 99 it's also down here. 92. 83 goes into the 80s interval and then 70 goes into this 70s interval. So we have all our tallies and our intervals which means we are ready to start graphing our histogram. So let's do the same thing. We'll set up an axis, x and y axis. And this time we're going to set up like little interval, little bins on the bottom. So, and they're all going to be touching each other. So we have, so it's the same thing we have here, 60 to 69. 70 to 79, 82, 89, and 92, 99. And remember what these bottom numbers represent, they all represent test scores. And over here, this is gonna be our frequency again, or the number of students. So if you're wondering what to put along here, what numbers, that would just be our tally. So the highest number we have our tallies is three. So that's that's really all we need to go up to. So we have one, two, and three. And now we could just look at our frequency table and start graphing this thing. So from 60 to 69, notice we have two tallies. So we're just gonna draw our little boxes and shade it in so we can see it. 70 to 79, we have three tallies. So we go up here. Up next we have two tallies for 80 to 89. And our last bin, our last interval, 90 to 99, we have three tallies again. And we could shade that in. So notice the picture we have here now with this histogram is now we can actually see more of a pattern. See how we, we now notice that we have more students scoring in the 70s and the 90s. So, so that tells us, this tells us much more information than when we look at our bar graph, which kind of, they kind of all blend together. It kind of looks flat and we can't really tell what's going on. It looks like most people are getting 65s, which doesn't really tell us that most people are getting in the 90s and the 70s. So if you're looking for more, check out the practice questions right here. The answers are up on my blog, mathsucks.org. There's a link in the description below. And if you're looking to make math suck just a little bit less, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post math videos every week. Thanks so much for stopping by and happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.